In this elementary calculus lesson, we'll take a look at a polynomial curve again, like we've done before, and we'll not only calculate the approximate integral under the curve like this, but we'll actually calculate the integral itself. But instead of just calculating it between the curve and an upper limit and a lower limit, like here's our upper limit of 1 here, and here's our lower limit of 0, which corresponds to our definite integral here of with the upper limit of 1 and 0, so, but instead of just using this curve as our curve for calculating the integral, we're going to use it, we're going to find the area between two curves. Because maybe you're working at the perfume design factory, and you, you know you like this nice curvy edge to your perfume bottle, but you don't like all these hard edges down here, these right angles. So you want another curve below it, make the bottle a little more attractive when you extrude it into height. So here's going to be our upper curve, and it's defined by uh, this equation: y is equal to 0.1 x squared plus 0.5. And so now let's get another curve, and let's go get a lower curve. And so at this lower curve I have set at y is equal to 0.x squared plus 0.2x. So there's a little bit of difference between the two, you can see, like that. And what we want to do is we want to find the area between those curves, instead of finding the area between the curve and the x-axis. So let's see if we can get both of these on the screen at the same time. Well, okay, well th there they are, like that. And let's see what we're trying to find is the problem is now in this case, in the earlier lesson, we could easily calculate it because we had our limit of integration at 0 and 1. But the x-axis really helped keep the problem simple because we're just looking at this straight line down here. But in this case, we have to account for this second equation somehow so we can find this area in between the two like this. So it's going to look, you know, Oh, uh, well, let me clear this out. You'll see what I mean. So it's going to look like this. So here's our initial rectangle that we're going to try and use to approximate this little area right in here between these two curves, between 1 and 0. So the way we need to do this, let's define this upper curve as f of x. So really, f of x is a term we use in place of y, like this. So because really it means a function of x. So when you plug in a value into x, it returns a value over here. That's why it's a function of x. And but if standing alone by itself you just see it as a quadratic equation as y is equal to 0.1x squared plus 0.5. But we'll just define the upper curve as f of x is equal to the same thing. But now we want to define the lower curve as well. And we'll just use a different name. So the lower curve is here's Here's the function for that one, 0.1x squared plus 0.2x. It has a linear term. This one has a constant term. And we'll call this function g of x. So to be able to take the integral, to be able to calculate the exact area between these areas, we actually need to have account for both, both curves in the equation. And the way we do that is we just subtract them from each other. You take the upper curve, and you subtract the lower curve from it. And that's just what I have here. I take I'm saying f of x, let me see if I can see them both. Yep, there they are. So f of x minus g of x is equal to, here's the f of x curve right there, just like that right here. And I'm subtracting the g of x curve right there. So I'm basically subtracting the upper curve, I mean the lower curve from the upper curve. And what I end up with, with negative 0.2x plus 0.5. So that becomes our new function that we're going to use for taking the integral. So when we take the integral, we take the definite integral between 1 and 0, like that, of this function now. So it's negative 0.2x plus 0.5. And after we take the integral and try and find the exact area, then we'll take the approximate integral as well using our triangles and uh, see if we can actually we'll compare them. So first of all, we'll take the integral. And that means, in this case, using polynomials and these rule of exponents, you can look those up for integrals. Uh, you raise this by 1 and divide it by 1. So this is x to the first right now, so that will become x squared. So it's going to become negative 0 0.2 x squared 
and then divide it by that same term 2 like that divided by 2 and then plus 0 0.5 x 0 0.5 x and then uh, technically plus c for a constant of integration and that really means this curve can float up and down and you can place it wherever but we won't need to use it for evaluating the actual integral itself but you'll see this all the time all right so we're going to evaluate the integral between 1 and 0 so now we have 1 and 0 and we plug in the upper limit which is 1 so we plug it into this equation so this is going to be 1 squared so this is going to be negative 0.2 squared divided by 2 and that's going to be equal to negative 0.1 and then we're going to add that to 0 0.5 and that means that's going to be 0 0.4 so 0 0.4 is for the upper limit and we have to subtract the lower limit. Well, the lower limit's zero here, and you plug in zero into there, well, that turns that whole term into zero, and you plug in zero to there, that turns it into zero. So the lower limit is zero. So the integral, or the area, the actual area, is 0 0.4 between those two curves, like that. All right, so I'll just say the area between the curves curves is equal to 0 0.4. All right, so now let's go try and take the uh, approximate integral using the uh, rectangles. So we'll just crank out a bunch of rectangles. And already we can see it starts at 0 0.6 and immediately starts filling in the space. And there it is already getting down there, but 185 rectangles, 329, 405, and there's 500 rectangles. And it's awfully doggone close, 0 0.4004. So it does a pretty good approximation at 500 rectangles. And I could do more. That's not really an issue. I just stopped at 500 arbitrarily. So you can see how easy it is when you approximate it instead of having to do all this other work. So I could just change it to any other location like this. And then that would give me, you know, the integral between this area. So it's just a really quick and easy way to approximate the integral without having to go through all the steps. We each have its trade-offs. And okay, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.